in this lecture we shall discuss about the entropy and the second law of thermodynamics We are accustomed to many one-way processes uh, that, that is processes that can occur only in a certain sequence. We call this the right way and never in the reverse sequence we call the this is wrong way. An egg is dropped onto a floor. A car is driven into a lamppost. Large waves erode a sandy beach. These one-way processes are irreversible processes, meaning that they cannot be reversed by means of only small changes in their environment. One goal of physics is to understand why one-way processes are irreversible. Although this physics might seem disconnected from the practical issues of everyday life, it is in fact at the heart of any engine, such as a car engine, because it determines how well an engine can run. The key to understanding why one-way processes cannot be reversed involves a quantity known as entropy. Irreversible processes and entropy. The one-way character of irreversible processes is so pervasive that we take it for granted. Changes in energy within a closed system do not set the direction of irreversible processes. Rather, that direction is set by another property, the change in entropy, delta S of the system. The change in entropy of a system will be shortly defined, but we can here state its central property often called the entropy postulate. If an irreversible process occurs, in a closed system uh, the entropy S we denote the entropy by the symbol S of the system always increases it never decreases this is the entropy postulate entropy differs from energy in that entropy does not obey conservation law the energy of a closed system is conserved. It always remains constant. For irreversible processes, the entropy of a closed system always increases. Because of this property, the change in entropy is sometimes called the arrow of time. For example, we associate the explosion of a popcorn kernel with the forward direction of time and with an increase in entropy. The backward direction of time, a videotape, run backwards would correspond to the exploded popcorn reforming the original kernel. Because this backward process would result in an entropy decrease, it never happens. There are two equivalent ways to define the change in entropy of a system. First, in terms of the system's temperature and the energy, 
the system gains or loses as heat and second by counting the ways in which the atoms or molecules that make up the system can be arranged. We usually use the first approach. Now change in entropy. Let us consider the free expansion of an ideal gas and uh, we consider an ideal gas uh, we have insulated uh, two chambers These are insulated walls of the chamber. The stock cock closed. So we have gas molecules here in this chamber. And since the stock cock is closed, so no molecules uh, enter in this uh, chamber. Now you see the uh, walls are insulated, so no heat can uh, enter the uh, chambers, or he uh, no heat can uh, can be extracted from this chamber uh, through these walls. So this figure shows the gas in its initial equilibrium state, say so this uh, state is I, confined by a closed stopcock to the left half of a thermally insulated container. Uh, there are two chambers, the left chamber and the right chamber, and uh, this is a container. If we open now the stopcock, then the gas, then the gas, the gas rushes to fill the entire container eventually reaching the final equilibrium state and uh, uh, now if the stop pop is uh, open then this gas will enter from this chamber to this chamber because this is empty like this so this is uh, mm, uh, B the figure B now this is an irreversible process so initially it was state I and now the final state F9 now this is an irreversible process all the molecules of the gas will never return to the uh, left chamber of the container the PV plot of the process uh, we can we can have the PV plot so along this is pressure along this is volume so this is the initial you know initial state and the final state so the PV plot of the process in this figure shows the pressure and volume of the gas in its initial state I and final state F. Pressure and volume are state properties. 
properties that depend only on the state of the gas and not on how it reached the state. Other state properties are temperature and energy. We now assume that the gas has still another state property, uh, its entropy. Furthermore, we define the change in entropy of a system during a process that takes the system from an initial state I to a final state F as uh, delta S is the final entropy minus initial entropy and we define it by this initial integration of initial to final and dq divided by t. This is change in entropy because of the change of state from initial state to the final state. Si is the entropy at the initial state and SF is the entropy at the final uh, state. Here Q is the energy transferred as heat to or from the system during the process and, and T is the temperature of the system in Kelvin. Thus an entropy change depends not only on the energy transferred as heat but also on the temperature at which the transfer takes place. Because T is always positive, the sign of delta S is the same as that of Q. However, there is a problem in applying uh, the equation. Okay, this equation. What is the problem? Um, uh, for uh, this, this equation to apply for a free expansion, uh, the problem is as the gas rushes to fill the entire container in the earlier uh, this figure, um, the pressure, temperature and volume of the gas do not have uh, a, sequ a sequence of well-defined equilibrium values during the intermediate stages of the change from initial state I to final state F. Thus, we cannot trace a pressure volume path for the free expansion on the PV plot that we have drawn here. Only we have shown the initial state here I and the uh, final state F, but we cannot actually sketch the actual path uh, through which the, uh, the system goes from the initial state I to the final state F. However, if entropy is truly a state property, the difference in entropy between states I and F must depend only on those states and not at all on the way the system went from one state to the other. Let us suppose then that we replace the irreversible free expansion of figure uh, for this one. This, uh, so this is figure one and this is figure two. So let us suppose then that we replace the irreversible free expansion of figure this figure two with a reversible process that connects state states I and F. With a reversible process, we can trace a pressure volume path on a PV plot and we can find a relation between Q and T that allows us to use equation one, this equation one, uh, to obtain the entropy change. We know that the temperature of an ideal gas does not change during a free expansion and temperature uh, in that case is the final temperature is equal to the initial temperature and which is a constant uh, capital T. This is for free expansion. Um, thus points I and F in figure 2 in this figure 
must be on the same isotherm. A convenient replacement process is then a reversible isothermal expansion from state I to state F, which actually proceeds along that isotherm. Furthermore, because T is constant throughout a reversible isothermal expansion, the integral of equation 1 is greatly simplified. Now, if we draw a figure 3, uh, say we have a container here and we have a gas. And we have a thermal reservoir here. And we have gas. And there is a piston here. And on the piston there is a lead shot. And there are you know insulated wall So this is figure 3 and the fixed temperature T of the uh, thermal reservoir. Okay, this figure shows how to produce such a reversible isothermal expansion we confine the gas to an insulated cylinder that rests on a thermal reservoir maintained at the temperature T. We begin by replacing just enough lead shot on the movable piston so that the pressure and volume of the gas are those of the initial state I of, of figure 1. This figure. This is, I have shown this is the final state but when uh, the gas was on, on the left, uh, uh, you know, the left uh, chamber and this chamber, right chamber was empty. That one was the state I. We then remove short, uh, lead short slowly, piece by piece, until the pressure and volume of the gas are those of the final state F. This is the final state. Uh, the temperature of the gas does not change because the gas remains in thermal contact with the reservoir throughout the process. The reversible isothermal expansion of figure 3 that we have drawn here, figure 3 is physically quite different from the irreversible free expansion of figure 1. However, both processes have the same initial state and the same final state. Uh, this is the initial state we have shown here. In the case of final state, uh, uh, there will be no um, transfer of heat uh, from the reservoir to the uh, gas. This is the piston. The reversible isothermal expansion of this figure 3 is physically quite different from the irreversible free expansion of figure 1. However, both processes have the same initial state and the same final state and thus must have the same change in entropy. Because we removed the lead shot slowly, 
the intermediate states of the gas are equilibrium states so we can plot them on a pv diagram and the pv diagram can be uh, shown to be this is figure 4 this is P and this is volume and this is final uh, initial state final state and then we can show the uh, path uh, along which the system goes from state I to state F to apply equation 1 to the isothermal expansion we take the constant temperature T outside the integral uh, of equation 1. Okay, we take this T outside the integral and then we'll have uh, delta S. So equation 1 becomes then delta S equal to um, SF minus SI and this is 1 by capital T and this is initial to final and this is dq now uh, this one can be written as qf minus qi and we can write is q by t so we write delta s change in entropy is sf minus si and which is q by T, this is change in entropy in the case of isothermal process. To keep the temperature T of the gas constant during the isothermal expansion of uh, figure, uh, this figure 3, that Q must have been energy transferred from the reservoir to the gas. Thus, Q is positive and the entropy of the gas increases during the isothermal process and during the free expansion. Now we can summarize. To find the entropy change for an irreversible process occurring in a closed system, we replace that process with any reversible process that connects the same initial and final states and then calculate the entropy change for this reversible process by applying equation uh, uh, equation 1 this equation when the temperature change delta T of a system is uh, very small relative to the temperature in Kelvins before and after the process the entropy change can can be approximated as for a um, system is very small then The change in entropy can be approximated by this, which is uh, approximately equal to Q divided by T average, where uh, T average is the average temperature of the system in Kelvins during the process.
course uh, in Kelvin um, now we discuss about the uh, entropy as a state function We have assumed that entropy like pressure, energy and temperature is a property of the state of a system and is independent of how that state is reached. That entropy is indeed a state function and state properties are usually called, can be deduced only by experiment. However, we can prove it is a state function for the special and important case in which an ideal gas is taken through a reversible process. To make the process reversible, it is done slowly in a series of small steps with the gas in an equilibrium state at the end of each step. For each small step, the energy transferred as heat to or from the gas is dq. Uh, the work done by the gas is dw and the change in entropy energy, I'm sorry, and the change in internal energy is de int. These are related by the first law of thermodynamics in differential form. So we have the internal means change in internal energy is dq minus dw. This is the change in internal energy. Very small quantity and dq is the energy transferred as heat to or from the gas. Energy transferred and dw is the work done by the gas. This is the first law of th uh, thermodynamics we know. We call the system, the gas means the system. Uh, because the steps are reversible with the gas in equilibrium state, and we know that dW is P into dV. And also we know that dE internal is equal to and CV into DT. Uh, where DV is the change in volume and is the number of mole the system gas and CV is the uh, specific heat at constant volume constant volume so if we substitute these two quantities dw and d int in this equation then we have the 
therefore we can rewrite and that equation into this um, uh, we divide both sides by t This will be dq by t, and this is uh, okay. Also, we know that Pv equal to nRT. Uh, this is the ideal gas equation. So, uh, instead of P, we have nRT divided by V, and here dv, and this is and C B D T by T. Okay, now if we integrate this equation, integrating we get and this is Okay, I am sorry when we divide this equation, you know, by uh, t, then uh, this t will be cancelled out. So we have here. Are constant, so okay, but uh, the left hand side is nothing but the change in entropy. So, is delta S this is actually uh, SF minus SI, and this is NR. And logarithm base E of Vf by Vi and here Ncv logarithm base E and Tf by Ti. So we get this equation. And uh, we note that we did not have to specify a particular reversible process when we integrated. Therefore, the integration must hold for all reversible processes that make the gas from state I to state F. Thus, the change in entropy delta S between the initial and final states of an ideal gas depends only on properties of the initial state and properties of the final state only. Delta S does not depend on how the gas changes between the two states. Okay, now we shall uh, um, discuss about the second law of thermodynamics. Here is a puzzle. If we cause the reversible process um, that, describe, we, that, that was described previously to, to proceed uh, from the initial state to a final state in that figure that we, uh, we, we, we did uh, draw before, the change in entropy of the gas which we take as our system is positive. However, because the process is reversible, we can just as easily make it proceed uh, backward from the final state F to the initial state I. Until the original volume of the gas is restored, uh, we take slowly adding lead short 
to the piston uh, of the figure that uh, we did draw previously. In this reverse process, energy must be extracted as heat from the gas to keep its temperature from rising. Hence, uh, Q is negative and so from our uh, equ previous equation, uh, delta S equal to Q by T, the entropy of the gas must decrease. Uh, does not this decrease in the entropy of the gas violate the entropy postulate, which states that entropy always increases? No, because that postulate holds only for irreversible processes occurring in closed system. The procedure suggested here does not meet this requirement. The process is not irreversible. And because energy is transferred as heat from the gas to the reservoir, the system which is the gas alone is not closed. However, if we include the reservoir along with the gas as part of the system, then we do have a closed system. So we can, uh, we can state the second law of thermodynamics as if a process occurs in a closed system, Uh, if a process occurs in a closed system, the entropy of the system increases for irreversible processes and remains constant for reversible processes. Uh, it never decreases uh, this is the second law of thermodynamics mathematically uh, the change in entropy is always equal greater than or equal to zero. Um, equality sign is for a reversible process. And the Greater than sign is for irreversible processes. Uh, in the real world, almost all processes are irreversible to some extent because of friction, turbulence and other factors. So the entropy of real closed systems undergoing real processes always increases. Processes in which the system's entropy remains constant are always idealizations. Uh, we would like to stop here and in the next lecture, we shall discuss about heat engines and in particular uh, the Carnot engine and we shall discuss um, and, and uh, find expression for the efficiency 
of a Carnot engine.